So, around around this time of year, I, I tried to catch up on the big Oscar-nominated, critically acclaimed films that usually usually are topping the the critics' polls in various magazines, and there's going to be a lot of films that we'll, we'll be catching up upon. I did this last year, I did this back in 2014, this year's not gonna, it's, it's not going to be any different, and it's probably going to be, there's probably going to be more reviews, because I, I, I'm, I've dropped out of school, so let's see what happens. So there's this film called Tony Erdman. Um, it was extremely praised at the Cannes Film Festival, but for some reason it was snubbed. A lot of people consider that consider that as being one of the biggest snubs of this year because you know Ken Loach made I Daniel Blake. I haven't seen that movie yet, but you know Ken Loach is a pretty damn good director. Cass is one of the best movies ever made. Period. So I thought like everybody agreed with that, but I guess a lot of people were really pissed off with Tony Erdman not winning Palm, the Palm Door. Um, and it seems to be like the strongest contender for this year's best foreign language film at the at the Oscars, right alongside L. Um, and it's topped both the film comment poll and the sight and sound poll, which is probably the most prominent poll in the world when it comes to film. So I got excited. Then I saw the length of the film. It was two hours and forty two minutes. It's, from what I've seen from the trailer and the poster, it just seemed like some really quirky movie about a guy going through his midlife crisis. But you know what, I decided to just th throw every single prejudice I had out the window. I've never seen both of these actor-slash-actresses in any film, both the main characters, I mean. So, I, I had no expectations for this film. I didn't know what the film was about. I, all I knew about the film is everything you can see on IMDb. That was it. So, I saw it, and it's it's genuinely what I'll say this. It's one of the most grounded films I've ever seen, but it's one of the weirdest films I've ever seen when it comes to the atmosphere. And I'll explain it. Now, right off the bat, the film starts off in a slightly humorous way, but it, the undertone is very bleak. There's this guy, he lives alone, his daughter's away, he has a very old dog. Um, his dog, by the way, spoiler alert, dies. He has a very old mother who's still alive, um, and who's still really sassy. He takes, you know, he takes partings in life and relationships, you know, people who's, who go away. He takes all of this in a very humorous way, and he's always filled with humor. He's always trying to make situations more funny. He's even, he always tries to make sad situations more happy. Um, and you can see that he's more of a happy-go-lucky guy who understands the seriousness in life still. But because of this, um, he has a huge distance with his daughter, who's a businesswoman and a consultant. Which is not really a job that you get when you're a really happy, fun, entertaining person, um, quite honestly. So, while his daughter is in Romania, he ambush visits her in Romania, which is not the most... I assume it's not the best feeling, in the perspective of the child. So, the first hour of the film kind of starts off like that. The coolness of the business environment that the daughter works in is authentically portrayed. You... You can feel the genuine stiffness in everybody. You can feel the pressure. You can feel the mi very mild sexism in the way that, in the way men interrupt the, interrupt women in the, in the way they in the way they talk when it comes to power. Um, and there are long silences. There are there's the huge lack of dialogue when it comes to the two main characters, the father and the daughter. And usually in these European art house movies, I get really bugged. When it comes to these really long and silent moments, these are the moments that I just go, what the fuck? I know you're trying to be more authentic. I know you're trying to be more realistic. But this is just fucking boring. But with this film, the silence works. Because it emphasizes the awkwardness and the distance that these two characters have. It actually serves a purpose. So the first hour of the film is completely bleak. It's beyond depressing, but it does it in such a real way that you're impressed. Y you get into it. It's like watching a Kenneth Lonergan film. It You get into the, the, the genuine depression that these two characters are going through, and the little sparks of humor that their father desper desperately tries to push in. So you get into it, and then the film just drastically changes. 
So this happens. The daughter asks her, her dad to go away. Then she goes to a meeting. It's a very so-and-so meeting. Then she goes and like and ha they have like what was it? I think they the, he she has sex with this co coworker of hers, and then she goes and meets these meets her friends at a restaurant. And at that restaurant, at the bar, is his father in a wig and this really weird bug tooth little thing. And he acts like another person. He says, oh, my name is Tony Erdman. Well, in fact, it's not. And he acts like he's a businessman. He acts tough. He talks about his friend whose turtle died after 45 years. It, it suddenly, and I, I know this sounds strange, but it kind of suddenly changes into an Adam Sandler movie. It has it has way too many similarities with Adam Sand with 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 the, I'm, and I'm talking about the crappy Adam Sandler movies. I am not talking about the Punch Drunk Loves, the Spanglishes, the Rain Over Me's. No, I'm talking about fucking Happy Gilmore. I'm talking about I'm talking about Click. I'm talking about um, Happy Madison. I'm talking about those movies. I'm serious with this. Um. The change is so drastic that at first I kind of found it jarring. Like I was I was not ready for that. There are fart jokes. There are women eating cum ridden pastries. There's a guy with buck teeth and a wig going around telling people that he's like the Prime Minister of Germany. A guy saying there's also this other guy who's saying like he'll fuck the main woman character real strong. Real strong. Those are the words that he uses. I'll fuck you. Real strong, not real good. No, real strong. There's a good emphasis, emph emphasis in there. So there's a lot of like really misplaced humor there. So at first I didn't really get the in intention. I there at first I thought, why are people praising this movie? This this is just awkward. But then. The f because this is at the 70 minute mark and the film is a hundred th this film is 162 minute 62 minutes so from the 70 minute mark to up until like the 110 minute mark I was confused but then the film starts to slowly but surely show its intentions and then you get it it suddenly clicks and it's usually I'll explain how it clicks to me, at least, this film is about a father trying to help his daughter to see the bright side of life. That silliness is important because this daughter, this daughter character, is the kind of person that really thinks that her life is complete. His or her, li her life is complete because she has a steady job, she has friends, she knows exactly who she wants to meet, she has a lover, she knows exactly what she needs to do to get like his lover to lover to get his horniness out of the way, you know, he, he, she knows exactly what she'll do when she wakes up, she knows what to wear, she has everything planned out, so when somebody actually questions her, and actually questions if she's actually enjoying life, and if she knows where she's going, she just throws back the question at that questioning person to make everything awkward, she's that kind of a person, so... The father's just trying to make her more softer, she's, tr he's trying to make her realize that it's okay to not have everything just planned out. Now, obviously, this is not a new thing. This is not this extremely original idea. This this story has been done before multiple times, but in most of ca in most cases, it's done in a very cheap and overly sentimental way. And usually the payoff and the sudden changes in the characters come at really obvious points and it comes at really um really cliched ways and they're usually not that long it these those kinds of movies do not take two and two hours and 42 minutes for the character arc to work but this film actually takes its time it understands that the change should not just happen it if it just happens it would be cheap what the film needs to do is to make both of the characters understand where each 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 other is in their life because the father's not a perfect character the father's not this messiah-ish character who understands every answer in the world no he's flawed too he's confused too so the 
The daughter needs to show, the, he, the film needs to take time for the daughter to show the father where she is in her life, but then the father also needs to show how where he is in his life. So this interaction actually makes the whole thing feel more human. So as the film goes on, and around the 110 minute mark, the film starts to hit this weird semi-climax uh, of this, of this, you know, of this cl sense of closure between the, these two characters, where the the main character, the, the daughter character, suddenly sings this Whitney Houston cover, and it's so, it's a strangely funny scene. It's really funny, and. It's funny because the daughter character sings it in such a dedicated way, in a place where she doesn't really need to be that dedicated. Um, it hits a more, a, a more complete climax in this hilarious nude scene. This is, if you, this is the the best nude scene of 2016. A bunch of people are naked, and it's the funniest thing you'll ever see. It's so not cheap. It. Like it builds up the joke. There's a reason why they're naked, and it's usually it's and it's because of this really frustrating thing that. Here's the thing: the daughter is trying to he hold a party, so she's she gets on a dress. She doesn't like the dress, so she tries to take it off, but it's always stuck. The zipper gets stuck. The dress gets stuck, and she's basically kind of naked. She's basically naked. She only has her panties on, and even that underwear is kind of like see-through, So, and then somebody's at the door, and she just opens it, and there's her friend, and she comes in, and they're like, hey, this is, and she just, you know, instinctively says, it's a nude party, and by her saying that, and by her, like, initiating this situation, you get it. You suddenly understand that everything that the father was trying to do has worked. The daughter is now more spontaneous, she's softer, and she understands the humor in these situations. She's not a stuck-up anymore. And when and this nude scene lasts for a long time. The joke keeps building. So you can genuinely see the ambition and the emphasis that the film is trying to focus on this sense of maturity. This, you know, this sense of growth and maturity. And it gives you this really nice scene where the closure becomes complete. There's this nice, nice emotional hug in the park. There's this great image of this father in this really weird costume. But it's... It's so big and hairy and weird that it's strangely comforting in the way that, you know, the Spike Jones Where the Wild Things Are movie is comforting. Um, and it actually has a great last scene where it slowly levels down from the silliness and they actually have a grounded talk about what just happened, how they're going to live, and what we should do as human beings and how we can get be better. And... The ending is kind of open, kind of an open ending. It's the film's not really sure if the daughter is like, if the daughter has like fully accepted this idea of how to live from her father, or maybe he's she's just trying to make her father happy for one moment in his life. Maybe that's her intention because the last scene is not her smiling. The, in the last scene, she's kind of in this. Her expression says that. There's more grief and sadness and frustration and confusion and maybe just some sense of um, empathy in her face than happiness. So it it still ends on a very confusing. I mean, not no, not it's more of a complex note. It's saying that yes, having a sense of humor in life is important, but it's but it's not that easy. You can't just have a sense of humor. And just because you have a sense of humor doesn't make life complete or bright. You can see it with the father. The father's a great example of that. The father is not totally happy. The father's not this perfect person. He's still miserable at times. He still has a hard time communicating with his daughter. So the film ends on a really mature note. It just says, yes, having humor is important, but we understand that it's not easy. So although... The if you look at the film on a very you know surface level, this idea has been done before, but I don't think it's been done in this mature of a way and this realistic of a way. So I think that's why people are really, really, really praising it. Now, for now, 
I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 4. Like, I was watching it with my dad. I was distracted a few times. So, I didn't have enough concentration to really get really emotionally invested in it. But then, I feel like that if this film is still being talked about, like, 10 years from now, I think I'll re revisit it and just, like, get this extremely emotional reaction out. And the film's just going to get this really emotional reaction out of me. I, I swear to God, it really is that good. I, I'm, I feel like I'm underselling this film because the film is really good and ambitious and this is how filmmakers should make their movies. Um, so yeah, I'll say this. Objectively, it's a 3.5 out of 4. No, no, like, subjectively, it's a 3.5 out of 4. But objectively, I think it's a solid 4 out of 4. It's really, really good. And I think everybody should watch it. And I understand why everybody's praising the living hell out of it. So yeah. Tony Erdman, check the hell out. We'll get into the other Oscar-nominated, big, critically acclaimed films later on. Bye.